Today's recipe calls for diced tomatoes. We're going to be making a homemade ketchup. This is the second episode to my comfort food series. Technically, this is not a food. This is a condiment. But this holds some nostalgic feels for some of you, my brother included. So with that said, let's get started. The first thing we're going to do in a large saucepan over medium-low heat is toast one six ounce can of tomato paste. Toasting the tomato paste like this will give us a nice caramelization on the natural sugars that the tomato paste holds and it'll give our ketchup a nice robust deep rich tomato flavor. This step is totally optional like everything else in life besides death taxes and brushing your teeth of course. You're going to toast the tomato paste for about five to six minutes or until your tomato paste is a nice deep red brick color. This is the same method we used in our rigatoni alla vodka video. The best way to caramelize all your tomato paste evenly is to make a nice even layer on the bottom of your pan to ensure everything gets caramelized at the same exact time. It's important that you give it the occasional stir to ensure that you don't burn anything. Now that your tomato paste is a nice deep red color, we're gonna add one 28 ounce can of diced tomatoes. You're gonna use the liquid from your diced tomatoes to deglaze your pan, ensuring that you scrape the bottom and sides of your pan with your rubber spatula to get all of that tomato paste up. It's important to use a rubber spatula, especially in a pan like this, since it's a nonstick pan. and give everything a nice stir together to incorporate everything into one nice tomato mess. Now that we have our diced tomatoes and tomato paste well mixed together, we're gonna start adding all of our spices. First, we're gonna add a half a teaspoon of cayenne pepper, a quarter teaspoon of ground black pepper, a quarter teaspoon of ground, a half a teaspoon of onion powder, a half a teaspoon of garlic powder, a quarter teaspoon of ground mustard powder, a quarter cup of granulated sugar, and half a teaspoon of sea salt. We're trying to be extra and use sea salt for this. You can use kosher salt instead if you choose. And one dried bay leaf. And give that a nice stir to incorporate all of our spices in with our tomato paste and diced tomatoes. You wanna make sure that everything's really well mixed together. We're gonna cook this for 10 minutes before we add the next ingredient. You want your heat to be on low. We're gonna slowly cook this. If you have it on too high, the bottom will scorch and you'll have a big tomato volcano and it'll splatter all over the place and it'll just be a huge mess and you don't want that. And you can start to tell that our tomato mixture is starting to thicken up a bit. And give it the occasional stir to ensure that the bottom doesn't scorch and burn. The traditional way of making ketchup is you would cook this entire mixture for 50 plus hours, but we're gonna cheat and use a thickening agent in the end. So stay tuned to see what I'm talking about. After the first 10 minutes is up, we're going to add a quarter cup of white distilled vinegar and give everything a nice stir to incorporate everything really well together. We're going to cook this for another additional 10 minutes. So in total, we're going to cook our ketchup for 20 minutes over low heat. The additional 10 minutes will help bring the rest of the flavors all together and help thicken up our ketchup. Go ahead and set a timer so you don't forget. If you're not convinced yet on why you shouldn't be making this for yourself, this stuff is 10 times better than the Heinz ketchup. Trust me, it's that delicious. And it's really simple. Then lastly, we're going to add about a quarter teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce. Man, that's a tough word to say. This will help add another flavor profile to our ketchup and give that a nice stir to combine really well with the rest of our ingredients. And you always want to make sure you scrape down the sides of your pan as well so nothing burns. Now that our ketchup has cooked for 20 minutes, we'll go ahead and pull our bay leaf out. We can't blend this and you don't want to blend it into your ketchup. Now is the perfect time to tell if your ketchup is too thick. I cooked mine down a little too far, so I added just under a quarter cup of water. This will help thin it out a bit, but keep in mind we are going to use a thickening agent to thicken it up and it will thicken over time as it cools down in the fridge. So you don't want to overdo it when you add a little bit of water. Then pull it off the heat. Now that your tomato mixture has cooled down a bit, we're going to add everything into our blender. I found it easiest to scoop it instead of trying to pour it all in at one time. Then of course, scrape your pan. You don't want to leave any of that liquid red gold behind. And we don't want to be wasteful, of course. Now that you have everything in your blender, you're going to start blending your face off. You're going to blend this for about two to three minutes. We're looking for a nice, smooth texture. We want a nice, velvety, 
puree, so that means no chunks whatsoever of tomato. Now that you have a nice smooth tomato puree, we're going to add 2 grams or about 2 teaspoons of xanthan gum. This is the thickening agent that I was talking about earlier. Xanthan gum is naturally occurring and is derived from plants. The xanthan gum will thicken up our ketchup, giving us the perfect consistency and texture that we know and love. You want to blend this xanthan gum in for about a minute or two, ensuring that everything gets really well incorporated into our tomato puree. Xanthan gum is a bit tricky to incorporate into our ketchup, so it's best to use a blender because it has a high vortex, making it easier to blend in instead of doing it by hand. Now that you have all of your ingredients really well blended together, we'll go ahead and throw it in a bowl to let it completely cool down. It's important to let your ketchup completely cool down before you season it. The flavors will change as it cools and is completely cold. And of course, scrape your blender to ensure you get all that liquid red gold. It's important to try your food at what temperature it's going to be served at, then you'll know for sure if the seasonings need to be adjusted or not. After I've let my ketchup completely cool, I gave it a try, and I thought it needed a few more pinches of sea salt. Now would be the perfect time to add more salt, more vinegar, or more Worcestershire sauce, or any other seasonings that you choose to. Once you add it, of course give it a nice stir to get it really well incorporated into your ketchup. Now that your ketchup has completely cooled down, we'll go ahead and throw it into a mason jar. This is a bit tricky, pouring it straight out of the bowl like this. You can grab yourself a funnel to make it easier or throw it in a measuring cup to pour it in. This is what I love about mason jars. You can use them for pretty much anything. We'll get all that good stuff in there. And of course we had to make some french fries to eat with our ketchup. It'd be a crime if we didn't. All right, our ketchup's done, let's give it a shot. Just kidding, that'd be super disgusting to eat spoonfuls of ketchup and it'd be kind of creepy staring into a camera eating spoonfuls of ketchup. So I'll just get a little, little bite. It's nice and robust in that tomato flavor. Then it's nice and balanced from the sweetness and the acidic from the tomato and the vinegar. Then it's slightly spicy from that cayenne we added. It's just a nice smooth tomato ketchup. So let's try it with the fry next. Yeah, it's good. All right, that's it for this video. This ketchup is so simple. It's such an easy recipe, and it's way better than the stuff you can buy at the store. It has a lot less sugar in it. And this stuff is like a blank canvas. So if you wanted to make it a bougie-style ketchup, you can add some truffle oil. If you wanted to make it a spicy boy ketchup, you can add some chili oil, or you can add some garlic oil, because seriously, who doesn't love garlic? It's so delicious. Or if you're doing like a barbecue of some sort, you can buy one of those little handheld smoking guns and make a smoke ketchup, like simmer down now. That's pretty crazy. It'd actually be good. So with that said, if you enjoyed this video, give it a like and also find me on Instagram at TaylorMakes92. I think I'm going to go try some concoctions my brother likes to eat ketchup with, like scrambled eggs or fried burritos. So if you like to eat ketchup with stuff besides fries, let me know in the comments. I'm interested to see what you have to say. And go ahead and subscribe so you can keep up with the series. There's going to be a lot of good food on this one. So with that said, we'll see you on the next one. Technically, this is not a food. This is a condiment. But this holds some n nostalgic feelings fillers for some of you, my brother included. So with that said, let's get started. All right, our ketchup's done. Let's give it a try. Just kidding. That'd be super weird and rough and pretty weird. And I already said weird. All right, that's it for today's video. This one was a crazy easy recipe. This ketchup is like a blank canvas. You can throw pretty much anything at it and make a whole different style of ketchup of your liking. Yeah, it's fry approved. I love garlic, seriously, it's so delicious. Or if you're doing like a barbecue meal or a smoked meats meal. <laughs> with it, you can buy a smoking gun and make a smoke ketchup. Like, calm down, sister, that's pretty crazy. So with that said, calm it down now. All right, that's it for this video. This is a really simple one. You can add so many different flavors to this thing. It's like a blank canvas. You can add some chili oil, truffle oil, or even truffle oil, chili oil. What was the other one? <laughs>